Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, we are at part five of Reloading 32 ACP. I've been working extra hard for y'all uh, to get some videos out there and uh, keep a lot of these projects moving so they don't get bogged down over time. Uh, if y'all can, uh, make sure that uh, you leave a thumbs up, you subscribe, and I appreciate those that leave comments because we are trying to boost the channel up a bit and the more interaction of all that stuff that you get on YouTube, um, the more the YouTube will put your video out there so others can see it. So I appreciate you all that do that. So today with crimping, uh, we're all set up here. So the one thing that I don't want to do is I already have my bullet seating die set up on the RCBS um, rock chucker. And I don't want to disturb that because I've already gone to the trouble of setting it all up. Now, at some point when I get a new bench uh, where that rock chucker sits, I'm just going to get one of those Redding turret presses. Um, that's, you know, I think probably the easiest thing to do. But uh, since we don't have that right now, what we're going to do is we're going to use our Lee hand press right here um, to go ahead. The, the crimp die is already set up, ready to go. So we're going to use that to accomplish our task today. One of the things is that with these Lee hand presses here, um, if you don't have one of these, these are excellent tools to have because you can screw in a die real quick. If you want to do small jobs, if you need to decap something real quick, in this case, like with us, with crimping and everything, uh, we can get a die set up really quick here on this. And also it's very portable, it's very light, they're very inexpensive. And for those of you out there, I know especially in the past three years for a lot of folks, uh, with the whole pandemic thing and then also too with everything that's gone on with inflation. Things are expensive, money's tight for a lot of folks, um, and maybe you still want to do some reloading but you simply can't afford a bench uh, or you cannot afford uh, press and all that set up. Not, uh, not to worry, um, it's just like uh, whenever I started out uh, back in 2013, um, I didn't have the greatest uh, year I would say. And uh, it was one of those things where, you know, I, have, I was pretty much kind of on a tighter budget and I wanted to do something with some uh, time that I had and I wanted to learn to reload. So I said, hey, I'll just get this Lee hand press here and go ahead and get started loading nine millimeter. And um, that's how everything started. Now I've got two benches and a bunch of presses and all that. So, um, you know, um, it's a thing where uh, you don't necessarily need to have some big, um, huge um, progressive press or whatever to start reloading. You can start with, uh, you know, basically a $40 hand press. And, um, you know, I used uh, Lee's Perfect Powder Measure as well to get started. So perhaps what I'll do is I'll make a whole separate video about that, um, how you can get started pretty cheap. But anyways, the hand press works pretty good. The Redding uh, Taper Crimp Die, one thing I noticed out there is that um, these are out there, but they are not uh, widely available. Um, so it is a um, thing where um, you do have to maybe search around. I found this at Graphs, and then I also think that I found it later on somewhere else. It was one of the big uh, reloading sellers out there online, and I, I honestly can't remember which one it was. But Graphs had a couple of them in stock. I know Midway said it would be like a two month uh, waiting period for one. Um, so if you're wanting to do a project like this, um, you know, uh, jump out there and get one of these um, for taper crimping. Supposedly these are the way to go from everything that I've seen. Uh, this is also what the author of the hand loading article used as well for, for uh, his crimping. So yeah, um, and Redding, I have to say, is probably one of my favorite uh, reloading manufacturing companies. They're, you pay more, but their quality seems to be pretty high. Um, and the only thing that I tend not to like about Redding is that uh, their instructions and stuff are a little bit kind of out of date and sometimes a little bit vague for someone who might be new to their dies or reloading or whatever. Um, Lee, I find, is one of the best companies out there in terms of instructions for all their stuff. So, to set up the die, um, they did give you some instructions here, and um, a lot of times with uh, crimping uh, pistol brass, it's one of those things where, um, 
you know, you talk to a bunch of folks and you always get um, a bunch of different answers, <laughs> you know, pretty much in terms of how much to crimp and all that, um, depending on, um, you know, where the cartridge head space is and everything. The one thing that I tend to kind of look for whenever I do crimp is that uh, I want to crimp enough that if I take this uh, case and I push it up against wood, I have the, the pad down here, but um, if I push it up kind of um, against something solid and I give it a little bit of uh, a push there, um, you know, I measure the case obviously beforehand and then after I push it into something, I measure it afterhand. Um, if, the, if the size of the case has shrunk considerably uh, by um, several thousandths uh, of an inch, then it's a thing where I'm probably not crimping enough where it's going to hold that bullet in place. And especially with a lot of semi-auto or full-auto firearms, um, you don't want uh, basically bullets uh, flopping out of a case. Um, I've actually had that happen, I think, years ago in 300 Blackout with another manufacturer's um, rounds that they made. It was a chronic issue where actually the... This is kind of in the early days of 300 Blackout when people didn't really know what they were doing with it and uh, essentially the bullets would actually come loose and you'd end up with powder everywhere and it's a big mess. Um, so the, the kind of the goal I aim for is that if I am going to do that test and kind of push the round into something solid that essentially the bullet is not going to move. Now also obviously too you know I don't want to overdo it and that's one thing I have to watch for because I do have some good upper body strength so you know really ramming it in there I don't really need to do that, but uh, if it moves, then I want to probably tighten up the crimp die pretty uh, a little bit more. And so adjusting this wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, basically just screwing it all, all the way and then backing it out a couple turns and then kind of actually going back in and adjusting it till you get to the amount of crimp um, that you want to have. Um, this is one of those things where, just like with all stuff for loading, you know, you guys have to basically figure out and decide what you want to do and what works best for you. Um, but one of the things that I did was I decided to kind of um, look at what um, factory ammo kind of looks like in terms of the crimp. So let's get this open. This is a box of Remington. I actually bought this uh, recently. Um, as we all know with Remington, um, they... Uh, went entirely bankrupt and then all the pieces of Remington have gotten sold off um, to different ownership so now the firearms company is separate from the ammo, ammo manufacturing company and all that stuff so all the trademarks got sold off all the factories the equipment uh, everything is all gone to other places or to other people so um, they have now got their uh, ammo manufacturing back online again. And uh, I believe this was made sometime recently. Is there a date code on that? Uh, nothing I can make out. <clears throat> but uh, I decided to kind of look at it. One of the things I have here, I bought this on Amazon. I'm going to put out a little review on it on my channel here soon. But uh, one of the things as you get older and everything is uh, <laughs> you start to kind of get to a point where um, a lot of times you cannot see, um, you know, all that well um, in terms of like looking at stuff close up or especially if it's dark. So one of the things that I did was uh, using this, this has been really handy to have this tool. And I can pretty much kind of look at a case a little bit closer up and examine it a bit more. And it might not come out here perfectly um, on the, the camera here, but instead of just looking at it with you know straight on like that now I can get kind of 2x magnification here and uh, and have a look at it and so what I did was this is the case that I made here on the right it's not been crimped yet and then this is a case that has actually been crimped so I can kind of have a look at it this is a 71 grain full metal jacket bullet now this bullet here on the right is plated but um, I can kind of have a look at it and I can kind of see with some detail kind of how the crimp looks. And so what I'm kind of looking to do now is whenever I crimp is to actually emulate that a little bit. So let me go ahead and crimp it here. And let me get it on camera. Hold on just a sec. 
So let me go ahead and crimp it. Okay. And now let's go ahead and compare the two kind of side by side. So kind of doing a funky thing where I'm looking through my camera, but I need to look through <laughs> the magnifying glass. But essentially what I've kind of done is kind of aimed so that the crimp looks somewhat similar to that Remington round and I don't end up over crimping it. And I've actually, I've already set up the die as well. So just kind of having a look at it. So yeah, I think I'm pretty much kind of in the ballpark on that in terms of the crimp between both of them. And I think it's looking pretty good. The other thing too is that I kind of did my little test as well, pushing it into a solid object. So these here, I set these aside. And these, as I was adjusting my die, these were ones that um, they moved about five to six thousandths an inch uh, whenever I pushed in on the side of the lo reloading bench with them. Uh, so to me, that tells me the crimp is not good enough. And then the other thing too is I don't want to over crimp them to where I'm like stripping off the plating and all that sort of stuff uh, where I get, uh, you know, to the point where you're taking it to extremes. But to me, this wasn't acceptable in terms of where I went from uh, uh, these varied between 0 0.970 and 0 0.974 and most of them moved down to 0.965 or so. So to me, I thought that was a bit much. That's just kind of my opinion. Um, and uh, so I figured I needed to crimp a bit more. And then uh, pretty much uh, once I did that and dialed in the crimp die a bit more, then uh, with the ones that I checked, it either didn't move at all or just a thousandth of, of an inch with uh, putting pressure on it. Um, so to me, that's kind of more acceptable in terms of what I'm looking at. <clears throat> so yeah. Pretty easy overall. We should be able to knock these out pretty fast. And uh, just nice and handy um, with this, uh, this, um, Lee, um, this uh, Lee hand press here. So very easy to use. And also too, the one thing about this hand press that's funny is um, you'll have all these people that get real obsessed about um, you know, how uh, shaky a reloading bench might be or how much a reloading bench might flex. But this flex is all over <laughs> and it makes, uh, you know, for the average reloader out there, um, this Lee hand press, it'll make, uh, you know, uh, perfectly good ammo. Um, you might not ma make, uh, you know, some awesome, perfect uh, bench rest ammo, but like if you're just shooting like nine millimeter or, you know, two, two, three or something like that, it's fine, you know. I won't have any trouble getting good quality ammo. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and knock these out real quick. And then um, the other thing I need to do is actually check them um, in my Beretta 81 um, before I take it to the range and make sure that we have a good fit. Um, but uh, other than that, I think we're just about kind of good to go. And I'm looking forward to shooting these, so I'm hoping it goes goes real well and uh, everything works out good. And if not, then we'll make adjustments from there. So the next video is going to be actually taking it to the range and uh, putting these rounds through the chrono and then also too putting some on paper. And we'll see where we're at. We'll see what we get. We'll make adjustments from there. Then we'll probably load up some for my stash. And then uh, also, um, once I do that, I have plenty of other brass where we will move on uh, to trying accurate number two as a powder and see if we get as good or better results with that and see how that kind of goes. And then uh, we'll move on from there, maybe with some other bullets and we'll see how much brass we have left. So should be a fun, interesting project. Um, hope you guys are enjoying it. I got some other videos coming up soon, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right, bye-bye.